The start of one of the biggest changes ever in Apple's computer line is happening in a few months. And you know what? You should wait until it comes out to buy another Apple computer. So, uh, why is that? Let's find out. Take that, Intel. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Welcome to a two-part series following up with Apple Silicon. Today's video will be arguing that you should wait for Apple Silicon, while Wednesday's video will argue that you don't need to wait. Why argue both sides? Because I'm a deep, complicated, conflicted person. <laughs> I released a video about a month or so ago covering this topic, but a lot. A lot has happened in that time, and I wanted to revise and evolve my position a little bit because it has honestly changed. So if you aren't following every single Apple update, leak, news story, like a crazy person or something, let me bring you up to speed very quickly on what I even mean by Apple Silicon. Back in June at WWDC, Apple announced that they would start transitioning away from Intel-based processors inside of the Mac computers like what you have today, and they would move towards their own ARM-based processors, much like literally everything else Apple makes. The iPad, the iPhone, the Apple Watch, the iPod? Do they still make iPods? Everything else Apple makes already runs on ARM-based Apple processors. Now, Apple's been hinting at this transition for years, and we've all kind of just shrugged and said, sure thing, Apple, you know, whatever, and then we've gone about our lives. But this time, they firmly stated that over the next two years, Intel is out, Apple is in. They will still release a few Intel-based systems that are already in the pipeline, like the iMac 27-inch that we just saw a few months ago. But starting this fall slash winter timeframe, we should have our very first all Apple computers. Whew, long-winded intro aside, here's why you should wait until this happens. First, power. Look, we all know that Intel makes some pretty powerful processors, Besides kind of being whooped up on by AMD for the last year or so, in single core performance tasks such as gaming, etc., they are excellent, but they've started to fall behind in multi-core or multi-threaded workloads recently, video editing, having multiple Chrome tabs open at once, things like that, things that people actually care about. Who doesn't have a thousand Chrome tabs open on their computer right this second? Who? Why this is important is Apple processors are actually pretty darn good at multi-threaded workloads. We don't have a one-for-one -one example right now as there are no Apple Silicon computers out there to buy, but take your iPad for example. Yes! Spoilers for this video, if you watch my cheapest Apple Silicon MacBook Pro video, we will be using the current iPad Pro as our sort of like base level stand-in for an Apple Silicon Mac. Your iPad Pro, or the iPad Pro if you don't own one, has an 8-core Apple processor inside of it running at about 2.4 gigahertz. Now, if, again, if you're not a computer nerd, for comparison, if you want to get an 8-core Intel processor running at 2.4 gigahertz in the current MacBook line, you have to go with the top-of-the-line MacBook Pro with the Intel i9 option. And this, the cheapest version of that processor that you can get is $3,000. 8-core i9 versus the 8-core Apple A13. My iPad costs $800. Again, it's not... I know it's not a one-for-one -one comparison as the MacBook Pro 16 does have more RAM, more storage, a graphics card. There are reasons that this costs what it does. But it shows the scale of what we're potentially talking about. Now, I'm not speculating that the new MacBook Pro 13 will have the same power on hand as the current Intel MacBook Pro 16, but an almost six-month-old tablet approaches the potential raw power on hand of a $3,000 laptop. That's the potential. That's like the dream. And hopefully the hype train's not like too hypey, but that's the dream. The potential to have an 8-core, 2.4 gigahertz processor inside of something small like the MacBook Pro 13 with the same graphics capability that the iPad has, like being able to run Fortnite at 120 frames per second, or it was able to do that when it was available. That's another, that's a whole nother topic. Um, but that's impressive power. Another huge potential benefit when it comes to power is the thermal performance of Apple chips. Like, laptop nerds know. I am definitely a laptop nerd. This is not something that's gonna get you motivated unless you really spend most of your time messing around with laptops. Thankfully, I spend most of my time messing around with laptops. This has me excited through the roof. I mean, look at the Dell XPS line of computers. They have very powerful Intel processors inside of them, and they had designed that entire laptop around those powerful processors because they generate huge amounts of heat. Not only the XPS, look at the Dell G5 Special Edition gaming laptop with a Ryzen 8 core 2.6 gigahertz processor inside of it. That is a gaming laptop with huge fans, a gigantic body, and it also runs 
obscenely hot. When your laptop runs hot, the system will limit the power to the processor to keep you from like destroying your processor or from melting your machine into a pile of metal or plastic or to catch anything on fire. Like it has to limit the heat. My iPad Pro never even gets warm to the touch. It doesn't, like it is thermally managed because Apple processors are the way they are. So one of these new Apple machines could Again, I don't actually know, but I'm very excited to spend this video speculating. It could be something like a MacBook Pro 13 with an eight core processor inside of it that generates the same kind of heat as my iPad. How do you not get super pumped about that? And how do you then like buy an Intel based MacBook? That's no kidding. That's, I've said this before and I'll probably say this again. Every single laptop manufacturer since the beginning of like laptop time, since the, since the world of laptops began, they've always had to worry about how much of a processor to put inside of a small body because of heat. And Apple might be about to fix a foundational problem. Like laptops are designed with the core assumption that only certain types of processors can fit in certain types of machines. And if you want real power, you either have to have obnoxiously loud fans huge cooling systems, or you just straight up have to limit the power to the CPU off the bat. That's what Razer does with my Blade 15. They limit the power that the CPU can ever have to keep the cooling down. And Apple, Apple could change all of that. This, no kidding, no kidding. This is the thing that has me most excited about the whole Apple Silicon thing that's happening right now. Power whatever. I, I can only use so much raw power, but I hate spending money on specs or features that I don't get, and thermal performance is one of those things. That's great and all, but we have that power on hand right now. I mean, look at the MacBook Pro 16. It's a very powerful MacBook. So what makes it worth waiting for Apple Silicon when I can get most of what I need today? That's a fantastic question. I'm glad, I, glad you brought that up, Gary. And that'll be the genesis for the next video where we dig into, yeah, maybe you shouldn't wait. Maybe you could get a good laptop right now, but that's boring. Back on the hype train. Choo, choo. <laughs> Battery life could be another huge area of gains made in the switch to Apple Silicon. As I said, during that cheapest Silicon video, there are really two parts of the battery life equation. There is the daily use and power drain that happens from using the computer, video editing, word processing, browsing the internet, spreadsheeting, power pointing. Yes, that's a verb, point. Using the computer will drain the battery. Shocking revelation, man. That's what you come here to the Everyday Dad for, shocking revelations like that, right? Now, I'm not as concerned here because I only need a full day's worth of battery life. And for me, let's say that's eight hours of medium to light use. That fulfills my need in any piece of technology. But what I think could be a new spin on their battery life is not the consumption of power, but in the preservation of power. We're getting deep. If I leave a laptop right here, if I leave this sitting on the table all week while I use my desktop for most tasks, then I come back to be like, hey, I gotta do something on the go, I need the laptop, I'll come back, the battery will most likely be straight up dead. The same could not be said about my iPad. The iPad has some kind of like battery magic built into it that I could leave it on my desk in a closet, left over in my house that, you know, the spiders are living in. I could leave it in there for a week and I'd come back and I've only lost like 2% battery life. That's... It, I can't think of another way to say other than magic. That is remarkable stuff. And that's a very specific reason to wait for Apple Silicon. It's not that the battery life will last you forever and you'll never then need to plug it into a wall. It's more like a laptop or computer that's always at the ready. Whenever, so long as you didn't run the battery dry, whenever you need to pick it up and take it somewhere, or maybe you've gotten caught up in a meeting that lasted four hours when it could have been a 10 minute email, not that that ever happens to me weekly. Even in those instances, you grab the laptop and you'll be ready to go because the battery life will be preserved. That's awesome. Plus having seen my electricity bill all this summer, I prefer not to waste that electricity stuff because I'm a dad and the electricity bill, it's an extension of my personality. Like the, the electricity bill is something that I take personally. Don't waste electricity. The next reason to wait could be a straight up more practical one than a fanciful idea like better performance or better battery life. It might just cost less. Now I've seen a lot of speculation on the potential lower price point of the new Apple Silicon MacBooks. However, I maintain a healthy sense of skepticism that a company would willingly take less money when they've already accustomed us to certain price points. Like we're already used to paying $12.99 for the base model MacBook Pro 13. So I'm skeptical that it would go less than that. But I have seen a lot of chatter that it could be up to $100 less with the move to Apple's own processors because you don't have to spend as much when you make the processor yourself. The event could be in the next month or so. So it's not like you have that much to lose by waiting. And $100 is nothing to laugh at. And it's absolutely something that will need to be factored into your next purchase decision. And the last major reason that I think you should wait for the Apple Silicon Macs as your 
next MacBook purchase is the way their software will now interact with that hardware. Yes, Intel Macs will continue to be supported for years to come, and it should get some of these benefits, but, but yes, I said it twice. I didn't like accidentally mess up this take. I said, but twice. Look, in my day job, I'm a project manager at a software company. And sometimes one of the hardest things we have to do is deal with disparate kind of hardware, trying to make things interoperable while they exist on different kinds of platforms. That's a huge headache and one that we spend a ton of money on trying to make work and then maintain it afterwards. Apple is already known today. Like one of the selling points of buying an Apple machine is having one of the best overall ecosystems on the market. The phones, the watches, the tablets, the computer, they all pretty much work work seamlessly through and with each other. But the newest version of Mac OS titled Big Sur running on Apple Silicon chips will be able to natively run all of the software across all of the platforms. It'll be able to run iOS and iPad OS apps. That by itself isn't necessarily something that shakes me to my foundations of my universe. I mean, I can always pick up my iPad if I really wanna play some Fruit Ninja. I don't need it on the computer. It's not the apps themselves. It's more of the underlying compatibility that has me excited. Things like apps that work natively back and forth between macOS and iOS, not just from iOS to macOS, but things going both ways. And even new kinds of app and hardware syncing that we haven't seen yet because it all doesn't work on the same underlying hardware. For example, just off the top of my head, one that I would love to see airdrop right now is one of the absolute cornerstones of why people choose Mac. I would love to see, now that it's all gonna run on the same set of processors, maybe some way to get that refined and evolved into something faster with better efficiency of transfer speeds, maybe even get iMessage wrangled into that because it's, all the hardware will be the same. That's crazy. And this next thing is about an app, so I'm gonna consider it the same thing. Apple Pro apps, Final Cut being my personal favorite, now running on Apple hardware could have another huge increase in productivity and efficiency on themselves over things we've seen in the past. So what I mean is now that we're having the software run on its own hardware and you combine that with a powerful GPU combined with a CPU from Apple Silicon, those software programs could potentially give us performance boosts that we've never seen and could absolutely, absolutely make even the smallest of the MacBooks creative powerhouses that might be lighter, smaller, cooler, both in, wow, that looks cool and like physically not as hot and less expensive ways. Though, okay, we've gone through all that and I just spent the last 2000 words just shoveling coal into that hype train. It's good to remember that I said potential and potentially 13 times in this video, I searched it. I did a command F afterwards. These new Apple Silicon computers could be way better than anything I'm talking about. They could be way worse or they could be the exact same thing that we've seen before. We don't know yet. So I, as much as I'm super hyped up, let's make sure we're keeping our hype levels in a maintainable way so we don't get like disappointed if it's not what we're like, all this stuff that we're excited about. And I'd like to leave this video with a question. Are you waiting for Apple Silicon or are you buying an Intel Mac right now? Leave me a comment below and let's find out, is all this hype making people wait or are you just, hey Gary, I still got work to do. I had to go out and buy a MacBook Pro 16. I'm darn excited either way. And if you like this video and are curious about what I think the very first Apple Silicon MacBook Pro will be, thankfully I've got a video that you can watch and find out all about that right here. Go ahead and click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.